Hey everyone, thanks again for clicking in. Today we're going to discuss our one screen interactive whiteboard and annotation software built on Hitachi Starboard. Now we're in our one screen user interface right now and as you can see I have a couple of icons down here in my customizable bezel. At this point I can literally click on my interactive whiteboard. One screen interactive whiteboard annotation software is going to launch automatically for me and off we go. Now our toolbar here is extremely important and extremely powerful. First, all, first off, I have the ability to be in this vertical setting. I can make it a little chunkier if I want to. If I want to have it horizontal, I can, etc. So legitimately customizable in this fashion. Now on top of that, I actually have the ability to set this guy with different profiles. So for instance, right now this is my profile toolbar. The benefit of having the ability to set up different profiles is that most people who have these products are going to have numerous people who are going to want to use it. And at that point, each person who's going to be a user of the product can set their own profile. And what you'll see here is that I have a Kevin and an overview. So for instance, if I wanted to change my profile, I can click on overview, click on open, and automatically you'll see a completely different toolbar. You can do as many profiles as you want to in your organization. And what this really does is it makes it comfortable for each person who's going to present on here to be able to use their toolbar. They know what buttons are there. They know where they're going to be. They can much more easily do their presentation without having to worry about different tools on different people's platforms. So at this point, I'm going to go right back and cl click on my toolbar so I can get fresh again. Now, at this point, once again, with our whiteboarding tool, there's so much you can do and it's so robust but you can also keep it quite simplistic. So for instance, we have a normal pin, and I'm gonna show you all the different pins that we have here. Normal pin is one where you literally just draw, anything you draw, it's automatically gonna stay in that shape, in that form. I have an intelligent pin, great pin for flow charting, for doing anything where you're enhancing a presentation by doing arrows, circles, underlines, anything like that where it's a shape, it's gonna recognize it, usually within a six, sided shape and what you'll see there is it's recognized every single every single shape that I've drawn and made it nice and clean and perfect for me. I additionally have a text pin. Simply put, I can draw text. I can write out a word. It's going to automatically pop into text. Very easy. This once again cleans it up for people who have bad handwriting like myself. This makes it so I actually look like I have good handwriting. Now I have a scroll feature here. This is fantastic. This is my endless whiteboard. So by clicking on my scrolling tool button, this allows me to move the screen up to create more space for myself. An additional pin that we have here is my dual pin. Simply put, I can have a few people up here at the same time annotating on the board if I choose to in my dual pin setting. I also have a pointer pin. Now the pointer pin is interesting because what will happen is, as you'll see, as I draw something and I draw something new, it automatically disappears. That's a great tool for when you're doing presentation enhancement. You don't actually want to save the information. You just want to make marks on it in just a, a real-time application without saving. It's a really nice tool to use that for as well. Now another great tool that I want to show you here is our text box. Now I'm going to go ahead and scroll up, create more space for myself, and once again give you a flow chart example. Now once again I can draw my little shapes here. Now what I also want to do is show you how if I draw a bad shape. Now you'll notice that I didn't recognize it. The great news is in this tool specifically, if I click on an X, it's going to automatically delete it for me. So I don't have to worry about erasing it or anything like that. Now with my text box, what I really like is I always have the ability to write physically directly onto the screen, of course. Now you can only fit so much in there when you're writing it with your hand or with a pen. So the good news is with my text box, if I actually put the text box there, I can first of all adjust the size, the font, the bolding, italicizing, underline, etc. But with my keyboard here that I happen to have as well, I can easily type in information. And as you can see, I can put in a lot of information depending on the font size I use. So this will be a great tool to utilize for any kind of list making, any kind of flow charting, et cetera. Very, very powerful tool to, to produce all of these different applications when you're creating. And once again, we're just in whiteboard mode. Shortly, we'll go out into other documents and do some presentation enhancement. Now, some other things in the whiteboarding mode are the ability at that point to bring in imagery. So, Going over here into our images area, there are already embedded images that are physically in the software itself, and this will be good for certain uh, educational purposes, etc. However, my favorite tool is actually our search tool. So I've already typed in the word car, I'm going to click on enter, and images of cars appear. This is accessing Google Images, so you can literally type in anything that you want to, and whatever's in Google Images will appear here, and now I can actually take literally any image that I want to, throw it directly on the screen. So what you'll notice here is I can grab and drop, drag and drop these different images here. 
Once again, you are doing a much larger, much more robust job of presentation for whiteboarding purposes. Now, what you'll also notice is as I bring these guys in here, I can resize these guys if I want to. I can move them around. If I want to make it a really long one for some reason, I could. So the point is, you have a lot of customization here. Now, on top of that, if I decided to say, hey, you know what, guys? I want to draw on this guy once again. This is my tool to draw on. So if I want to take my pen, I can circle on the wheels. I can say, all right, guys, here's the, here's the windshield. The point is, you can draw on anything. You can bring in these images. And once again, you have a very high level of whiteboarding. So now imagine when you're doing a whiteboarding session and you have the ability to use regular pins, intelligent pins, text pins, dual pins for having two people up here at the same time, or for that matter, bringing in additional imagery so that you can actually really bolster a much higher level of whiteboarding session. So once again, extremely powerful. Move this around as I need to. And you also have zooming capabilities as I need to. I can zoom out, take a little bit of a step back. And don't forget, these other pieces up here, these are all movable as well. So if I needed to move this guy over there, I can. If I needed to resize their shape, I can. If for that matter, if I wanted to put a star over here and put it in the box for whatever reason, I can actually even choose to group these guys and have it move around as once. That would probably be a very good application for our text down here as well. So that way, if I wanted the text to stay with the box, I can easily group and guess what? I can move it around, resize it, etc. Awesome for flow charting. And the great part here is that when you're in this whiteboarding mode and you want to save things, everything is going to save automatically. I have an area right here, which is my thumbnail list. Now, we've only done one slide so far. So you'll see right here, but everything is already on there. And literally, basically to the second, as I'm annotating, it's going to save for you automatically. So going through your presentation, you don't have to worry about clicking save or anything. It's going to populate with your thumbnails. Now, you can always choose to either print these guys out if there's a printer involved, if you have a printer connected to the computer. If you want to save these, you also have the ability to save them anywhere on your computer. And of course, as you can see, you have a bunch of different file formats from PowerPoint to PDF to inter IW B, PNG, JPEG, etc. And at that point, once your meeting's done, you can let everybody know you want to send them the information that you did in the meeting and you very easily emailed out from there. Now, the last file format is actually one that's the, of the software itself. If you were to go up here and click on Save As, you also notice we have a .yar file, a Y-A-R file. What this does is it actually saves it in this format. Now, the power of this is that, as an example, using that flowchart idea yet again, if you build a flowchart, it's going to take you half an hour, hour, two hours. Who knows how long it's going to take? But the point is, when you want to go ahead and send it out to everybody, you can PDF it, have everybody have reference of it. However, as soon as you want to make an edit, the great news is on the back end, you can save it in this file format. And at that point, it's fully editable. So as soon as I want to come in here, make a quick adjustment, maybe make an addition, maybe make an edit, whatever, I can do that right here. Save it again in this editable format. We call it our living document as well as PDF it so everybody has a new copy of it. Very important to be able to come back in and edit documents. You don't have to sit there worrying about all the time it's gonna to take to redo the document from looking at a PDF. Very, very powerful tool there as well. I'm gonna go on to a new slide at this point, nice clean space, and I just literally clicked on my new page button, which you'll also notice, hey, here's a whole new button, a whole new thumbnail. So at that point, this is a nice blank slate for me. So a really cool tool I also want to show you here, I'm going to go ahead and use my text box, and I'm just going to write the word frog. Now, in writing the word frog, it's going to automatically populate into a text format. Now, what's really nice here is when I highlight this with my, with my pointer, I have a menu button up here. The menu button does give me a lot of different options, but some of the really great things that I want to show you is searching. We have four different search engines that you can actually put in here. In this case, we have Google and Wikipedia. If I click on Search Frog in Google, it is automatically going to take me out to the web browser and boom, it's going to Google Frog for me. This can be great for a lot of different applications. It could be any word. It's going to search for it in Wikipedia, Google, Yahoo, whatever search engine you want to, you can do. And it could be any search engine as well. If it's a law search engine, a, a medical search engine, you can go ahead and put that in there. You can do up to four at one time and it will populate for you. Now, another great little tool here, I'm going to bring up uh, my standard desktop and I'm going to bring in a PowerPoint. Now, what will happen here is that first of all, I always have the ability, of course, to, to, to go ahead and, and view my PowerPoint. Now, at this point, once again, I can take my annotation tool. This is called presentation enhancement. This allows me to literally draw on an image of my PowerPoint. Now, what I haven't showed you yet is all my different pin colors and options in that front. Now, what I'll do is down here, 
You don't have to worry about physical pins, first of all. Now, our screens will, can also be used with different utensils and different stylus pins, and we do actually come, in our, in our systems, do actually come with two pins that you can utilize if you're not comfortable with using your hand. But what you'll notice here is we have a lot of different pin colors. So literally, all you do is click on the pin color you want, and off you go. It's that simple. Now, on top of that, if you choose to, you also have the ability to change your different pin styles, highlighters and things of that nature. And if for some reason you need a dotted line or a dash line or, or even a dotted dash line, you can choose one of those. And then lastly, you can easily adjust <coughs> how thick you want to draw as well by using my sliding scale right down here. Thick as a paintbrush, thin as a pencil, and of course I can drag and drop anywhere in between and have the, the right size that I want to. Extremely robust pen tool application. Now once again, I'm going to keep going back to this. Guess what? We have a saved slide again. Now we have three. As I click my mouse button, everything disappears, and now I'm back into my PowerPoint, nice and simple. So the ability to be able to annotate on anything that you want to is very nice at that point. And so I can go right back into my PowerPoint here. Now what I do want to show you also is the, the ability to crop. Now for instance, as we all know, if I were to click on my annotation tool, it'll snapshot my screen, and at that point, I'm going to have everything in here. But let's say I actually want to specifically focus just on this guy right here otherwise. Well, I have this great cropping tool that I happen to put on my toolbar. It's one of my preferences. And now I have the ability. Now you'll notice here, I have a square function where I can do it more of in a square, but I actually want to get this actual circle right here, and that's it. So I'm going to take this pen tool, this, so I'm going to take this tool, and now you'll see I'm actually going to draw around in a circle, cropping just that circle bit. And as soon as I complete that circle, it's going to go ahead and take it and put it directly into my software. Voila. Now check this out. You now have, instead of all the other frill stuff behind it, I'm specifically focusing on just this one bit. And this is fantastic too, because now I can resize it. I can you know, make it bigger, smaller, et cetera. If for some reason I really want to make it skinny, I can even take it in this way. Wouldn't want to do that probably. But the point is, I have the ability now to specifically focus on that one thing. Now this could be verbiage from a website or a Word doc. It could be an image from a JPEG where you really wanted to isolate it, and by using our cropping tool, you can either take it in a square or a rectangular format, or even draw around the image specifically or the words specifically. Once again, a great tool, and as we all know, I can annotate directly on this guy if I choose to as well. And then just to prove the point yet again, there's our fourth slide. Now, when you have multiple slides, what's going to happen is, first of all, let's say I actually want to rearrange these guys. So in this case, I'm going to take this fourth slide, I want to put it in the front. I just want it to be in the front, and I want to put frog right behind it. Now, in this case, I have four different slides. If I highlight all of these guys, click on my down arrow on any one of these, I can now once again either print or save as. So now what will happen is if I choose to print these as a PDF or save them as a PDF, it's going to PDF it as a four-page PDF, which I can then, let's say, put on my desktop or network folder or whatever, and then I can do whatever I want to with it. Whether I want to email it out, whether I want to um, you know, put it in a network folder for people to access later, it's completely in my discretion. Now, on top of that, you have some other great conferencing features. Now, I'm going to go ahead and bring up a new whiteboarding session, once again, by clicking my new page button. Now, what you'll also notice is I have tools up here as well. One of them is conference. So the great feature set with this is you have the ability with up to 50 other locations, if they have the same annotation software that we offer, to actually host a conference. Now, what that means, it's a whiteboarding conference. So for example, as I draw this, on my screen, they in turn are going to see that on their site. And this is all going to be done directly through our software. It's always going to be in this format. You can bring in documents though, you can bring in a PowerPoint, an Excel sheet, a JPEG, and they're going to see that directly in the screen. Now on top of that, you have the ability then to share control. So if I have someone on the far end or numerous people on the far end, I say, hey John, I want you to go ahead and take it from here. I can give John control through my settings. He will then take control and be able to annotate, add, et cetera, to the presentation. So we have a collaborative whiteboarding session that can be done directly through our software tool. And once again, as long as other people have the tool, whether it's in the format of the screen or even on their desktop, they can go ahead and be a part of that conferencing application as well. Another great tool that we have is our recording tool. Now, you'll see after I click on my tool, you actually have a couple of just little buttons right here. Record, obviously record button. It's going to record what's happening on the screen. Now, this is a great tool if you're in a situation where you want to record a meeting or you have a training session. The point is it's going to record anything that's going on here. So if you're in a whiteboarding mode and then you jump into a PowerPoint and you annotate over the PowerPoint and you jump into a website, it's going to record everything that's happening 
and if you happen to have a microphone associated with the computer as well, it's going to record audio. So you will have a legitimate Windows Media file that you can play back where you can hear the audio of the person presenting as well as everything that was happening on the screen. And I will give you an example. I was actually playing a video game just the other day and I figured I'd record it. So we're doing a little car racing game. As you can see, it's recording everything in real time. I do not have the audio playing because you won't be able to hear it right now, but the point is if I were to be talking, it would have also picked it up because I do have a microphone associated with my system. Thanks again for joining us today in our whiteboarding session. As you can see, there is a lot to this tool. We've only really scratched the surface. I'll give you one last example. By clicking my menu button, you have the ability to access all of the different tools. And so by going over here, these are all the different applications that you can add at any point in time to your toolbar. And just to show you real quick, if I wanted to add, let's say this fill button, I literally drag and drop it onto the toolbar, I got a new tool. Likewise, if I want to get it off, I can hold my finger down, it's going to ask me to remove it, I remove it, and it's gone. So once again, guys, we've literally just scratched the surface. This tool is extremely robust. Once again, though, going back to the very beginning, if you want to keep it simple, you can keep it very simple if that's your preference. If you want to be the, the, the master at it, you can go ahead and be the master and you can have as many tools on here as you want to. So just remember that as robust as it is, you can keep it just as simple. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you soon.